good fish. Get in that net, buddy. There we go. Got him. Hey, what is going on, everyone? I am out on the water with my buddy Dave today, and we are doing some tog fishing, which I am very excited for. I do not target tog much at all and the bite has been hot recently so we're gonna do just that and we are gonna be using two different baits some green crabs and sand fleas and we're gonna see which one performs the best if they prefer one over the other and we're gonna see if we can catch some fish there's opportunities for sheep's head black drum and a plethora of other species out here so very excited to see what we can run into and hopefully stick some big togs so Let's drop some baits down and let's get fishing. All right guys, so we are at this rock structure here. As you can see on the side scan, everything from here over is all rock. So we're gonna be putting our baits on these little bottom sweeper jigs today. This is a half ounce, I believe. But let's start with the green crabs. So I think I'm gonna leave all the claws on except the big one here this guy actually might already be dead and uh, I've got scissors they're pretty big so I'm just gonna cut it in half like this and I'm not sure how to where to go in or out so I'm just gonna go through some of the meat here and poke out a little bit like that if we get a bunch of our legs bit off and miss fish, then I might break all the legs off. But for now, we're gonna start like that. We're in 10 feet of water, so we're just gonna drop it down on these rocks and slowly drift and see if we can get bit here. We're just gonna keep it as close as possible to the bottom. Right there, I'm on the bottom now. I'm just lift it up a tad and I'm not sure if I should really be moving it or just letting it sit, so we're gonna play around with it. And the big thing with tog, sheep's head, these fish that are just munching on your crabs or bait on the bottom, they don't inhale it. So you've gotta have some pretty light tackle to be able to feel their bites so that way your bait doesn't get stolen and miss a hook set. And we'll probably have that happen a lot today. Oh, I just got smoked. Just got absolutely smoked. I think he stole the bait though. Oh yeah, he definitely did. Yeah, he took half of it. Gosh, he crushed it. It was such like a quick, quick but vicious little strike there he definitely that was definitely our first confirmed bite of the day let's see if we can get another bite from this fish hopefully I didn't drift too far off of it that was such an interesting eat there we go there we go fish on good fish that was a wacky hook set wasn't it there we go. Got him that time. Heck yeah. Get in that net, buddy. Get in that net. There we go. Got him. He's got a beautiful pattern on him. A little yellow in there. All right. Well, not a giant, but that is the start to the day. All right, guys. Well, that is the first fish of the day for me. Not big, but he definitely put up a nice fight. Look at that beautiful little yellow he's got right there. And uh, his big old chompers in the front. I've been in this little zone and definitely had some bites. So hopefully we can pick off some more here. But beautiful fish. We're going to get him back. See if we can catch some more. Alrighty. We just released that fish. I've got a new piece of crab here. I've just been going through the meaty section right here and out the shell just like that and let's drop this puppy back down see if we can get another 
Ah, oh, I stole it. Yeah. Just had one steal it right there on me. All right, guys, we're gonna move down these rocks a little further. We were hanging out in one zone that seemed to have a decent amount of fish in. We each got one there, but we have missed plenty and we kind of stopped having action there. So we're gonna move to a whole new area, see if we can find another group of fish stacked up and hopefully be able to hook more than we've been missing. So uh, I'm hoping that once we switch to sand fleas, they'll eat it just as well, but we'll have a better hookup ratio because with the crab, you know, the hook is that big and the crab is hanging off that big. Pretty much double the size, but the sand flea, it's the same size as the hook. So I'm hoping that our hookup ratio will be better. But I'm gonna drop this other crab down, see if we can get another one. And then we'll try switching to sand fleas for a little bit. See if that changes success at all. Yeah. Oh, he slammed it. All right, guys, we're gonna switch over to the sand fleas. I have missed so many on the green crabs. I'm not sure, it could be something that I'm doing wrong with rigging them, but this fits the hook really well. Not a ton of extra stuff for them to grab. So I just rigged it up straight through the back like that. Let's see if, let's see if we can get a better hookup ratio because I just got my stuff stolen right there. And yeah, at least we're getting our stuff stolen and no action, but it'd be great to hook up to more. Come on, baby. Oh, getting eight. There we go. Oh, it's a little tiny guy. <laughs> He's throwing down now. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, there is our first little one on the sand flea. Much smaller than our one on the crab, but a fish. Little tiny guy, such a pretty pattern. Look at those little tiny teeth. All right, we might stick to the sand fleas if uh, we can keep connecting and not losing fish like we were a lot with the crab. And that's our second strike or so with the sand flea. Let's get you back, bud. See ya. All right, let's see if we can get some more with the sand flea. David just got another. This might have been the answer. Um, they definitely were eating the green crabs, but we just could not hook them on the green crabs at a good ratio and uh, there hasn't been any giant fish that we've seen so I have a feeling a lot of them have been smaller and uh, you know just taking smaller bites out of the green crabs whereas the sand flea they can pretty much just eat the whole thing there we go oh that's a better fish oh no no yes no, that is 100% my fault. I saw a fray in the line earlier, and it was like tiny. I was like, you know what? It'll be fine. And I thumbed the spool. I forgot about it. <laughs> Guys, I can't believe I just did that. That was a much bigger fish than what I've caught today, and I just totally botched that. That's crazy. Oh, man. All right, let's get another leader on it. Like, oh, I should have just retied. I saw that fray, thought it would be fine. Thumbed it, and did I pay the price? That was fish of the day for me, for sure. All right, let's get retied. All right, let's get another flea on here. Try to get redemption from that one that I just broke off. Dang it, dude. It's crazy how shallow they are. <laughs> this is the shallowest we've fished all day. We're in like, I guess it's seven feet, but definitely the shallowest we've seen these fish all day. There we go. Good fish. Good fish. Nice. 
This is probably fish of the day. Come on, come up here. Oh yeah, not huge, but there we go. This one's got that yellow all over him too. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Nice one. All right. This one's definitely a keeper. We're not keeping fish, but definitely the biggest one so far. We got a fat little belly there. Look how yellow he is. So beautiful. Heck yeah. Going back. Thank you, buddy. All right. Well, we're definitely starting to get into them more the past half hour or so. And I feel like we've learned two things. One, the sand fleas are much easier for them to eat. And also, the golden rule of don't leave fish to find fish. Because earlier we found them in the same area. And it kind of died down for a little bit. So we moved down. Didn't find anything for a while. Had a bite here or there. We came back here and as soon as we came back, they've been a little shallower. But there's been a ton, ton of action compared to the rest of the day. So hopefully we can keep on hammering them. The sand fleas have definitely been producing more for us today versus the green crabs, that's for sure. Um, if there were more bigger tog around, not sure that would be the case. I think the biggest problem with the crabs is they're not getting it all the way because these smaller fish have smaller mouths, but been getting around the same amount of bites, but it's been much, much, much more hookups with the sand fleas, which was our thought process. So we might stick to the sand fleas for the rest of the time while we're out here to maximize our hookup ratio, because it went for, went from like one every four eats with the green crabs to now, oh, there we go. Now, almost, almost every eat we're able to hook up. This is a little guy. There we go. Just a little guy. All right, buddy, we'll get you right back. Wow, that hooked him really weird. Look, it went outside of his mouth, in it, and then back out. See you, buddy. The sun is definitely starting to get a little bit lower now. I'm wondering if that'll affect the bite any. There we go. Oh, he came off. If that'll affect the bite at all. Maybe they'll get one last good feed in before before the sun sets. Because I don't think tog are very active during the night. I could be wrong. I'm definitely a novice when it comes to tog and sheep's head and these uh these crab munching fish, but uh, I think they are mainly feeding during the day for the most part. There we go. There we go. He was running with it. Uh oh, he's running on the rocks. Come on, get up here, buddy. There we go. I think he ate it pretty much immediately. Nice. Another little guy. But man, these fish fight so hard for their size. So dang hard. Beautiful. Beautiful. if I've mentioned this but it's very important to always keep your line tight although that we're fishing at the bottom you don't want to have it slack on the bottom like this so if that's the case then you will most likely not feel the bite and miss the fish and obviously you've seen us miss a fair share today earlier but with a tighter line 
lighter braid and the lightest jig head you can get away with with how deep you're fishing to get it to the bottom but just just get it to the bottom just barely you'll get a lot more feel with all of those things combined there we go good fish heck yeah Dude, they fight so dang hard. Yeah. They do. This one's all painted up yellow, too. Oh, ouch. This fella is all painted up yellow, too. So pretty. <laughs> right through the roof of the mouth there. But he crapped all over me. Alright, we're gonna try one more area here. Right the the point, the edge of these rocks. We've got some good current sweeping through. See if there's another stack of fish hanging out here. Huh. Oh no. There we go. This is a good one. He's about the same cookie cutter size. There we go. You getting bit over there? <laughs> it's interesting how their patterns vary. This guy's got like. Yeah, he's got like one spot on him and like those faint lines down the side. I haven't measured a fish. This, I, I, I'm thinking this one's just keeper. Maybe a hair over. I'm gonna measure him real quick. Let's see. So I think 16 is, I almost just lipped him. <laughs> Six, 16 is keeper. I don't know, he's, he's like, Hair under 15, little guy. Whoa! Thanks, buddy. Alrighty, everyone. Well, we are off the water now. We just got all packed up and everything, and that was a really fun session. Uh, definitely, the sand fleas outperformed the green crabs not sure if that would have been different if there were some larger tog around that we were catching it just seemed like the green crabs were a little big for them for the size of fish that we were catching and uh we we're just missing and getting our bait stolen a lot with them and we got some more bites a lot more bites with the sand fleas i would say but a lot of fun and uh great great first real session for me uh chasing tog which i have not really done much at all so a lot of fun I am actually about to head up north to do some striper fishing. Hopefully find some big striped bass over the next 24 hours. So if you guys want to see some of that, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully going to have a good trip tomorrow and get some, get some quality striped bass in the kayak because I haven't really targeted them since the winter. So really looking forward to that. Going to be targeting them a lot more over the next few months, along with some uh, along with some other species like redfish. I'm going to try to catch musky this year, which I'm super excited about, and other species just through the cold months. So, very excited. Going to continue exploring and sharing my adventures with you guys here. So, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, and I'll see you guys next time.